In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the VectorBT Pro library and how you can get started with it, as well as some tips and tricks for expanding your knowledge of the library and discovering all of the features, which I wish someone had told me three years ago when I started using VectorBT Pro. So VectorBT Pro itself is the commercial successor to the open source VectorBT library, which I did a video on a few years ago, which you may have seen. It distinguishes itself from the open source free version in a few different ways. The first and most important one being that it is actively developed. So the financial support from people purchasing or subscribing to VectorBT Pro allows the author to work on it pretty much full time without having to work a regular job and then also on top of that work on maintaining and expanding the library. We see this often in backtesting libraries, so something like Backtrader or backtesting.py. They don't have full time maintainers. And so oftentimes those libraries die or just become stale over time. They don't add new features, etc. So that's one differentiating factor for VectorBT Pro. Another one is access to the Discord channel, which you get an invite to when you sign up. And again, because the author has the financial backing and is able to work on this all the time, whenever you get stuck on something or something goes wrong, there's a bug, etc., something you don't understand that isn't explained properly in the documentation, you can go to the support channel and ask for help. And oftentimes the author himself will reply to you or someone from the wider community or the users will get back to you. I've rarely seen questions go unanswered for more than a day. And normally it's much, much quicker than that. Now, while VectorBT Pro is a commercial product in that you have to pay for it, the source code itself is available to you as a paying subscriber. So after you sign up here, become a member, whichever payment method you use, you'll receive an email that looks a bit like this one, inviting you to the GitHub repo. Once you accept that invitation and then click on the icon here in the top right, you'll be sent to the private GitHub repo with all of the code. And so the source code is actually made available to you as the end user, which means that if you so choose, you can inspect literally every line of code that's running on your machine and modify it for your own personal use to your heart's desire. Now, in terms of learning how to use all of the different features within the VectorBT Pro library, there's a few different resources on the website itself. So once you've subscribed, you have access to the repo. There's a link here to the private website on the right hand side. And once you open that, you'll see this now has an unlocked padlock, meaning that we're in the members version of the site. And you can access the full documentation as well as some written tutorials. Now VectorBT is a very large and powerful library and it has its own way of doing certain things and different new ideas that you might not have seen in other backtesting frameworks. So like the indicator factory, for example. So the way that I recommend starting with the library is to first start with the tutorials, at least do the basic RSI strategy tutorial. And as you're going along, you'll encounter new functions and concepts that you might not have seen before as you read and try out some of this code. And if there's a particular concept, so say I want to learn about the indicator factory, I'd recommend going to the cookbook or the API. So the cookbook is going to have lots of small examples based on a bunch of different topics. So you can see it's got all of these indicator factory functions, how to get a specific version of the Bollinger Bands, for example, how to run and parallelize all of these different indicators. You can normally find what you're looking for just by looking through the cookbook. But in case you can't, maybe use the API. 
So this will have more comprehensive but more dense information, which can be hard to read if you're somewhat new to programming or looking for documentation. So if I go here to indicators, maybe to factory here, this will give me some information on how the indicator factory works. You might have to click around quite a lot to find a particular example that you like. So you can see here, this is the indicator factory, all of the different arguments for it. You can also use the search up here, so indicator factory, and that might take you to a different tutorial that has a more comprehensive section on that particular concept. And if you don't like text-based documentation and reading through pages and pages of material, you prefer video tutorials, which is why you're perhaps subscribed to my channel. I'll be making a series of videos on all the major concepts in VectorBT Pro and publishing them here on YouTube. See the link in the description for the playlist link with all of my VectorBT Pro videos in them. Now, if you get really, really rather stuck and you can't find any relevant documentation on something, you're basically down to two options. You can ask in the support channel, like I said earlier. So if there's something that you don't understand, chances are a lot of other people don't understand it as well. And so it's worth searching through the Discord. Maybe someone's had this conversation before about, you know, what is the indicator factory, for example. And if you can't find anything there, you can ask a new question for yourself and someone will jump in. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to push yourself technically as a programmer. One thing that I would recommend doing before you go ahead and ask for help is try viewing the source yourself. So we can see here that every single element in the API is going to have this little GitHub icon that says jump to source. That will take you to the source code responsible for that particular part of VectorBT try and have a read through it and figure out how it works. It might take you a long time. You might have to copy and paste different bits into ChatGPT or another LLM. But for me and my growth as a developer, I found that reading through the source has taught me a lot of new concepts and makes me a better developer overall. So if you have the spare time for it, I would recommend trying to find out the solution yourself as it'll give you a better understanding in the end. Now, there's also the documentation here. So we have tutorials, which are like they sound. They're small projects that try and teach you a specific concept from the library. There's the documentation, which tries to give a more high level overview of the concepts of VectorBT. So, for example, here we were talking about the indicator factory earlier. This section of the documentation is giving really detailed information about how the indicator factory works and why it's designed that way. So the documentation is going to give you a lot of conceptual information about how these different building blocks were created. I do really recommend the portfolio section of the documentation. So portfolio and from orders and from signals. You'll be using either from orders, from signals or something of that ilk basically in every backtest you do in VectorBT. So I would really recommend looking through this section of the documentation. But again, I'll be making video tutorials on these concepts if you'd rather wait for that. The API is going to give you a comprehensive overview of every single function in the library and all of the parameters, etc. give you a link to the GitHub. This is useful for understanding specific parameters, the different functions and classes and how they work but it's much more dense to read generally, but it can be good if you have something specific you need to look up. So for example, if I want to look up from signals, I click on this here, it takes me to the API and I can read the description of every single one of these if there's a particular argument I'm unsure about. And then finally, the cookbook as we discussed earlier, if I scroll all the way to the top of this page, is a bunch of quick fire examples, which can be really helpful for getting your head around a new concept in VectorBT or exploring a new area of the library. So if you've never looked at cross validation before in VectorBT, it can be a good idea to say, go to the cookbook and 
pick out a few examples, play with them, see what's going on. If you go to quantgpt.chat, there's also a custom LLM which utilizes the VectorBT Pro documentation as context for the conversation. So you can ask it questions about VectorBT Pro. There are a few examples here. Unlike ChatGPT, which doesn't have direct access to the VectorBT Pro private documentation, QuantGPT does have access to that. And so it'll be able to provide you with better answers than you might get just from asking a normal LLM without the additional context. There's a whole module in VectorBT for integrating LLMs into your workflow, and I'll make a video about that soon. But QuantGPT, which is provided by a community member, can be a great way to get an AI assistant working with VectorBT Pro free and at your fingertips. So as you can see, there's a plethora of extras provided with VectorBT Pro, not just the repo itself. Of course, you have the library, which you're using to run your back tests, but there's also a plethora of examples and documentation and tutorials on different aspects of the library, which I'll be adding to myself with these videos, as well as support from the author, should you need it, or other members of the community via Discord. And so if that sounds like something that you're interested in, you can sign up on VectorBT.pro. I have three videos linked in the description for Windows, Mac, and Linux on how to install VectorBT Pro and set up your development environment from a fresh install of the operating system so that you can get up and running as quickly and smoothly as possible.